Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you want to open up your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, starting in verse 1. Praise the Lord. We welcome those that may be watching by internet or may watch this uh, archive later. We're in Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 1. And when you have it, you can either stand or just say amen so I know everybody's ready. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. And we'll stop right there. Can these dry bones live again? Can these dry bones live again? Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Lord, we know by your grace, Lord, that all things are possible with you, Lord. And just as Ezekiel said, Lord, we know, Lord, that you can do all things and you can make these dry bones live again. And Father, we know the reason for that grace is because of your Son and what he did at Calvary. And Father, we just ask by faith, Lord, that just as you've shown Ezekiel, that you make these dry bones live again. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Can these dry bones live again? Amen. This scripture's and Ezekiel, what Ezekiel saw, first of all, was a prophecy concerning Israel's restoration at the second coming. Amen. But this prophecy can also have two other spiritual implications behind it. Amen. It also shows the picture of the coming rapture of the church, the resurrection. Amen. Where those who are dead in Christ, amen, shall live again. Amen. And be glorified. And also, number three, which I want to talk about this morning, just as it implies to Israel's restoration, it can also imply to the church's restoration. Amen. I'll say that again. Just as it applied to Israel and her uh, restoration at the second coming, amen, it can also apply to the church's restoration right before the rapture of the church happens. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because anything you ever see happen to Israel can also happen to the Gentile church in the New Covenant. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I just want to go through this this morning and encourage you, amen, and show you that despite the circumstances, the, despite what it may look like, amen, God can make them live again. I said God can make them live again. Amen. First of all, I want you to notice in verse 1, amen, it says that he was placed in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. Amen. Jesus said that he would place us in the midst of wolves, amen, because it's the wolves, it's the false teachers and preachers. There's so many of them, they have killed the church, Amen. And the church is nothing more than a, a bunch of bag of bones because of false doctrines, false teachings, and false teachers. Amen. Our nation, which used to be called a Christian nation, is no more than just bones everywhere laying on the open ground because of all the false teachings and all the false heresies that's come in. But thank God, uh, some of us who have accepted Christ, amen, have uh, held to the faith of the cross, amen, he's placing us right in the midst of not just the bones, but the false teachers and preachers as well. Amen. These bones, full of bones, these bones are the type of all the believers who have been spiritually killed, amen, by the wolves, amen. Jesus said he placed us in the midst of wolves, amen. 
Why? Because right in the midst of wolves, there's also a midst of full of bones. Amen. Christians who have been destroyed and ruined because of the false uh, doctrines and the false teachings. Amen. So we know two things. There's wolves around about us and there's bones everywhere covering the valley. Amen. But despite their condition, amen, only being only bones, amen, we're not talking full skeletons probably, we're just talking bones scattered everywhere. I mean, they've been devoured, amen. But despite their condition, God knows exactly where they are. How do you know that? Because he made Ezekiel, caused Ezekiel to walk round about him through the mists of the bone. So despite their condition, yes. amen. God has never lost sight of them. He still sees them exactly where they are. I know it looks grim, amen. There's wolves all around about, amen, because Jesus said we'd be placed in the midst of wolves. It has destroyed hundreds and hundreds of Christians walk, and it looks nothing more than like a, a bones laying about everywhere. Not just full skeletons, but pieces and bones just everywhere, uh, signifying not only have they been killed, but they have been devoured. In the last days, perilous time shall come. Amen. There will be more false prophets and false teachers in the last day. Amen. But despite their condition, amen, those who have been torn and destroyed by false doctrine, who may have walked away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of the devil, God has never lost sight of them. He knows exactly where they are because He made Ezekiel caused Ezekiel to pass by them. That tells me God still sees them and He knows where they're at despite their condition. Amen. And He says in, in verse 2, He says, And behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. First of all, He says, they were in an open valley. Meaning there's still hope. Amen. There's still hope. How do you know that? Well, look, if you look in Ezekiel 39 verse 15. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says, And the passengers who passed through the land... And when any sees a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it. The barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. And read the notes here in the expositor study Bible. It seems that all the bones will be collected and taken to the valley of Haman Gog and there buried. If this is the case, it will be done for a reason. The portraying of such as a monument to Satan's defeat and the victory, even the great victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In other words, those who want to follow Satan, their bones are buried. Yeah. Amen. Their bones are buried. Amen. But those, amen, <laughs> but those Christians who may have been devoured and destroyed by false doctrine, there's still hope because their bones are still resting on the top of the valley. Amen. Are you getting that? Amen. You may think there's no way they'll, be, they'll uh, hear the message of the cross. There's no way that they may uh, listen to me. There's still hope, church. Amen. I said there's still hope for the Christians. Amen. Because their bones are still on top of the valley. They haven't been buried just like the bones of all those who may want to follow Satan and Haman and Gog. Amen. Whose bones are buried. But these bones are on top of the valley. Meaning God has never lost sight of them and there's still hope for them to come back to life amen so don't give up hope church amen I said don't give up hope amen we have our blessed hope Christ Jesus Jesus said he is the resurrection he can make these dead bones live again just as he told Ezekiel and gave him the vision it may look glim it may look there's no way possible and in human strength and might there is no way possible but God has never lost sight of them That's right. amen and their bones are still on top of the valley, meaning there's still hope for these Christians. Amen. You may have taught your children, you may have taught your family 
about the Lord and they may have gone astray, amen. But don't give up hope, amen. Those dead bones are still on the valley, amen. And God hasn't lost track of them, amen. I said God has not lost track of them and there's still hope, amen. You may say, well, Brother Brad, they've been like this for years and years and years and years. Or they've been following this doctor for years and years and years and years. And there's just no way it'll happen. Ezekiel said, lo, they were very dry. You have to understand, bone has marrow and moisture. But due to these bones being in the open valley and the sun and the weather beating down on that moisture and that marrow is gone off the bone. Amen. Signifying those bones had been laying there for a long, long time. And the sun and the weather and the heat had dried them all out. Amen. So we ain't talking a, a death that had just happened and the bones were still laying there, but they had been laying there for a very long time because they were very dry. There was no marrow on the bone anymore. There was no moisture in the bone anymore. They were very dry. So it looks glim, it, it, it looks bleak, it doesn't look like there's no hope, amen. They're very dry. They've been following this doctrine for years and years and years, or they've uh, walked away from the Lord, and it's been years and years and years, amen. And you may say, well, there can't be no hope. Yes, there is, because God has never lost sight of them, amen. They're up on the top of the valley, even though there may be bones, meaning there's hope, amen. And we know, I know it's been a long time, but God can do miracles. He can do wonders. He can make these bones live again. Amen. Hallelujah. He can make them live again. I don't care what denomination they decided to go into. I don't care what excuses why they decided to walk away from the Lord or not believe. God says he can make these bones live again. Amen. Yes, they may have been sitting on the valley for a long time, but God has never lost sight of them. Amen. Because he made Ezekiel pass by around about them. And they were in the open valley, meaning they weren't buried yet. Amen. There's still hope. I said there's still hope. Our blessed hope, Christ Jesus, can make them live again. Amen. <laughs> and in verse 4, amen, he says, And he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. And that's in verse 4. Amen. He says, again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing, amen, and hearing by the word of God, amen. You know what prophesying means? Prophesying means thus saith the Lord, amen. He, the Lord's telling us this morning, go out to these dead, dry bones and say, thus saith the Lord, Jesus loves you, he died for you, and he can make you a new creation if you'll just place your faith in him and trust in him. Prophesy on to the dead bones. Tell them Jesus loves them. Tell them that he died for their sins. Tell them he can make them a new creation despite what the circumstances look like. He can give them peace. He can give them hope. He can make them anew. Yeah. Amen. Prophesy onto the bones, amen. And tell them, hear what the Bible has to say about it, amen. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, amen. It's the only way they're going to get saved, amen. If you go to the dead bones, amen. God hasn't lost sight of them, church. In our eyes, it may look impossible. Possible, but with God, He can do great and mighty things, amen. If we'll just allow the Holy Spirit to use us, amen, and loosen our tongue and say, Thus saith the Lord, Jesus loves you, He died for you, and He can make you anew, and He can turn things around if you'll just trust in Him. Amen. Prophesy unto Him, tell Him 
about what Christ has done at the cross. I don't care what denomination they may be in. I don't care how backslidden they may be. I don't care what uh, the deepest, darkest bondages they may be in. Amen. Yes, I know it looks like dead bones, very dry. But God can do anything if we'll just prophesy. Tell the people what the Word of God has to say. He loves you. He died for you. He'll help you, amen, if you'll just place your faith in what Christ has already done. Amen. And you will see a resurrection in your life. Amen. Just as we see these bones coming back to life once again. Amen. He said, prophesy unto him, amen. Prophesy unto him. It's the word which can guarantee the restoration, amen, and revival. Amen. However, such could only be done according to the word of the Lord. Amen. It has to be the cross. Amen. It has to be about what Jesus had done for them. Amen. And when you do that, amen, you will see the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Uh, Romans 6, 5. For if you be planted in the likeness of his death, you shall also see the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. So don't quit knocking. Don't quit asking. And don't quit telling them about Jesus. Amen. I said, don't quit telling them about Jesus. Amen. Yes, pray and ask the Lord and keep knocking and keep seeking. But also in the midst, don't stop telling them about Jesus. But you keep prophesying unto them and say, thus saith the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He died for your sins. Amen. And thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, in verse 5, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Amen. And I will lay sinews upon you, and you will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. And, he, and the Lord tells Ezekiel, if you'll prophesy and tell him, this is what I'll do. Amen. I'll make him anew. I'll make them a new creation. I won't rehabilitate them, but I'll make them brand new. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll give them sinew, meaning strength. Amen. The word sinew is a tendon. Amen. In the body. And what it does, it gives, uh, it, it gives uh, strength. Amen. And God's saying, I'll make them new. Amen. I'll make them a new creation and I will strengthen them. Amen. If you'll prophesy, if they'll hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he says in uh, verse 7, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. Amen. First of all, I want to show a few things here. If you'll just step out in faith, I know our flesh trembles at thinking of it, that we got to tell Jesus, amen. Even times, even a preacher, amen, we go up to somebody and our flesh is weak and we just tremble and say, I don't want to do this, but amen, thank God the Spirit gives us strength and we step out by faith and say it anyways, amen. Jesus loves you, he died for you, and it's the only answer. And if you'll do that, we see what God will do, Amen. He says, first of all, there was a noise. Amen. That noise is also translated in the Hebrew as a voice. Amen. His word will not return void. That word will keep speaking to their heart and spirit and soul. Amen. Wherever they go. Amen. When you tell somebody about Jesus and what he's done at the cross, amen, that word will not return void, but it will stick with them wherever they go, and it will continually speak to those dead bones. Amen. And God will start to shake the foundation beneath of them. I said God will start to shake the foundation beneath of them. Amen. That word will not return void, amen. God is going to shake the foundations of the churches. I said God is going to shake the foundation of the churches. If we'll just tell them that Jesus loves you and he died for you, amen, that word will go with them and it will shake the foundations of the church. Amen. And guess what will happen? These bones start moving. Amen. I said, these bones start moving. Amen. 
They may be dead, they may be dry, amen, but at the voice of the Lord, amen, speak it to them, amen, you're going to see people come in where the truth is being preached, amen. I don't care how far in bondages they are, I don't care how many uh, tattoos they may have, I don't care how many drugs they put in their body, I don't care how much alcohol they have drinking, I don't care uh, what uh, diseases uh, they may have or how far they've gone into sin, if you'll just tell them that Jesus loves you, he died for you, that word will speak to them and you'll see See those who are dead and trespasses and said all of a sudden come through the door and start hearing the words of the Lord. Amen. And you'll see a new creation come about. These bones can live again. Amen. These dead, dry bones can start walking. Amen. They're going to start walking to where the word of the Lord is being preached. Amen. And when I beheld, lo, in verse 8, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skid covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. Amen. So first of all, we tell them about the cross, the cross of Christ, amen, and it makes a new creation, amen, but they're going to need some power to get them up on their feet, amen. I said they're going to need some power, amen, to get them up on their feet, and the only way that power comes is through the cross. So first of all, they have to understand what the cross is, and when they do, then they're, then they're going to need some power. Then we say that word uh, wind or, um, yes, that word uh, breath can actually mean spirit. Amen. Come from the four winds, O spirit, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. Amen. They're going to need some power, amen, to get them up on their feet. Amen. While they're alive, they may live and be a new creation, but we're going to give them power. Or I shouldn't say we. The God is going to give them power, amen, Holy Ghost power to get them up on their feet again. Amen. Amen. We tell them about the cross. Amen. I said we tell them about the cross. And then we pray for Holy Ghost power to come. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. We tell them about the cross and what Jesus has done there. Amen. They become a new creation. And then we start praying for the Holy Ghost power. Amen. We start praying for the latter rain. Amen. And we start believing. It. And you'll see these dead bones become new creations. But not only that, the Holy Ghost will be upon them and they'll have power and they'll be upon their feet once again. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says in verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Amen. An exceeding great army. Amen. Satan has thought that maybe he can win this thing. Amen. His ministers, amen, who have deceived the people, have taught error, amen, has uh, fooled the world in believing that there's... Um, um, that there wasn't creation, but it was a big bang theory, amen. Telling the people, oh, uh, um, this sin is okay, and that sin is okay, and this and that. And leading them down false uh, doctrines, down false roads, amen. And I know we're in the midst of wolves, church. And I know when we look around, it's full, littered with bones everywhere, amen. And it looks like there's no hope. But just remember, church, God caused Ezekiel to uh, walk round about these bones. He hasn't left lost track of them and they're still in the open valley there's still hope church if we'll just prophesy on to the dead bones and tell them about the word of God which is the story of Christ Jesus these bones can still live again because God will speak to them he will shake the foundation and the next thing you know you'll start seeing dead bones come through the door wanting to hear the word of God these dead bones can live again. Amen. 
And when they receive their strength and they're made anew because of what Jesus has done at the cross, amen, we give the older call and say, be filled with the Holy Spirit and power and get them up on their feet back on this walk again, amen, to fight the good fight of faith because he calls it a great army, amen, a great army. They'll be back up on their feet again, a new, amen, a new creation once again, amen, restored, amen, with power up on their feet, amen, ready to battle this good fight of faith because God calls them a great army, amen. amen. These bones can live again, amen. I know it's not a long message this morning, amen, but it's an easy one and it's a good one, amen. I said it's an easy message and it's a good message, amen. All we have to do is believe, amen, and let God supply the grace and all we have to do is open our mouth and just say, Jesus loves you, he died for you to take away your sins. You don't have to struggle with that anymore. If you'll just put your faith in him and what he has done, God will start speaking to them, amen. He'll shake the foundation round about them, amen. And the next thing you know, you're going to see these dead bones start coming to the Lord once again. Amen. And they'll come back brand new. This wasn't rehabilitated. <laughs> Amen. Right. He didn't go out looking for skin that where maybe there would be a piece of skin and try to sew them back together with it. No, he made brand new. Yes. Amen. Amen. Brand new over the bones. Amen. He'll make them a new creation. He won't rehabilitate them like psychology teaches, but he'll make a brand new, a new creation. And he will give them some new strength. Amen. If they just, if you'll just tell them about what the word of the Lord says, what this bo uh, book says, what this Bible says, the story from Genesis to Revelation about Jesus and what he has done, amen. He told the Pharisees, search the scriptures, and for in them you think you have life, but they speak of me, amen. Jesus is the one who had life. Jesus is the one who gave Ezekiel this vision. Jesus is the one, that voice, who spoke to these dead bones, and they started living again. He is the resurrection. Amen. I said he is the resurrection. He can make them live again. Amen. He can make them live again. Amen. How do you know that? Because he's laid down his life so that they could have grace so that they may live again and have a resurrection. Amen. Amen. He can make them live again. Amen. Don't fear, church. Don't give up hope, church. Don't stop believing, church. Amen. I know they look like dry bones, and it's been that way for a long, long time. I know there are wolves round about trying to sway away um, the Christians and the people. Amen. But God has never lost sight of them. Just as Ezekiel, amen, was led round about the bones, that shows me God has never lost sight of them. Amen. And being in an open valley, they're not buried yet. Amen. There's still hope for them. If we'll just go to these dead bones, amen, and tell them Jesus loves you and he died for you. Amen. He will make them a new creation. He will strengthen them. He will make them brand new. Amen. He will turn their world upside down or right side up. Amen. However, which way you want to put it. Amen. And then you'll start seeing these dead bones. Amen. Not having to be forced to come to church, but they'll want to come to church because they'll want to hear the word of the Lord, what this book has to say. Amen. And then we'll lay hands on them and say, come Holy Spirit, amen, be upon them, amen. They're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. They may speak in tongues, amen, I believe they will, amen. amen. And they're going to be up on their feet once again, marching in the army of the Lord, amen, fighting the good fight of faith once again, amen. Do you believe it this morning? I said, do you believe it this morning? Whose report are you going to believe, amen? Are you going to uh, believe the report of the world and say they're dead bones? There's nothing, nothing's going to happen anymore. They're dead. They're gone. Are you going to believe what the word, the report of the Lord? Can these dead bones live again, amen? 
If we'll just prophesy on to him, amen. And when I mean prophesy, I'm just meaning thus saith the Lord. Tell him that Jesus loves you and that uh, God so loved the world, he sent his only son, amen. That whosoever should believe should not perish, amen, but live again. Amen. Amen. Just tell him, Jesus loves you. He died for you. And see a resurrection happen. See those dead bones come to life once again. Amen. I don't care what denomination they're in. I don't care how far backslidden they may be. I don't care how far away they try to walk away from God and what bondages of sin they go in. Amen. God has never lost sight of them. Amen. He loved them so much. He sent his son to die for them. Amen. He's never lost sight of them. Amen. And they're still in an open valley. There's still hope. He can still make them live again. And all we have to do is the same thing Ezekiel did. Tell them about Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. Amen. And if you'll do that, that voice will speak to those dead bones. Amen. That voice will speak to their dead bones. Amen. I can say this. Amen. It happened in my family. I said it happened in my family. I can remember when I first gave my heart and life to the Lord. Amen. I started praying. Amen. What about my parents? Amen. What about my folks? Amen. What about them? Amen. And I started telling them once again about Jesus. And when they Heard that word of the cross again. Amen. My father will even testify to this. He went to bed one night and heard the voice that said, Thomas, Thomas. And it shook the foundation underneath of him. And if he did it for him, he'll do it for every single other uh, person that's out there who may be dead and dry. Amen. And it made him live again. Amen. Amen. I said it made him live again, amen, and he's not the only one, amen, every single one of you sitting here who once uh, may have knew the Lord and walked away, amen, you heard the cross preached once again what Jesus had done for you, and you heard your name called, amen, Amen. that voice spoke to you, Amen. amen, it may have said Michelle, Michelle, it may have said Kevin, Kevin, it may have said Sylvia, Sylvia, it may have said Ruth, amen, but all of a sudden, your dead bones started moving to a church that was preaching the truth, amen, and the dead bones started living, and then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came upon you, and you got power, and you were up on your feet again, fighting the good fight of faith, don't give up, church, don't give up hope, these dead bones can live again we're proof of that amen despite our backslidden state at one time God never lost sight of us he still knew us and that voice one day spoke to us shook us and made us alive and got us up on our feet once again and if he did it for you and me he can do it for you or you on camera praise the Lord these dead bones can live again I said these dead bones can live again. So don't stop praying for your kids. Don't stop praying for your grandkids. Don't stop praying for your families. Amen. But not only that, don't stop telling them about Jesus. I don't care how much they mock you. I don't care how much they make fun of you. I don't care how much they ridicule you. I don't care how much they tell you you're a fanatic. Don't stop telling them about Jesus. Amen. If they say, I get it already, say, no, you don't. Amen. Jesus died for you. Amen. If it's your parents, don't stop telling them. Amen. If it's your grandparents, don't stop telling them. Amen. Satan is playing for keeps. And he's made the valley littered with bones. Amen. By his ministers who are in sheep's and wolves or wolves in sheep's clothing. And it's time that we go to these dead bones and start telling them, Jesus loves you, he died for you. You don't have to be a theologian, you don't have to be a scholar, all you have to do is just tell them and let God's grace do the rest, just like it did for these bones for Ezekiel. Amen. Because God has already paid for you and them who are dead bones to have the grace. Amen. He'll give you grace to strengthen you to tell them. 
and he'll give those dead bones grace to live again. And not only that, to give them power and to get them up on their feet once again, marching in the army of the Lord, fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. These dead bones can live again. Would you stand? Amen. These dead bones can live again. Amen. Whether you're talking about Israel's restoration at the second coming, whether you're talking about loved ones who died in Christ, who will live again at the rapture, or those right now who may be spiritually backslidden or have walked away from God. Amen. God hasn't lost sight of them. Amen. I said God has not lost sight of them. Amen. And there's still hope because they're just bones on top of the valley. Amen. On top of the ground. And if we'll just go to them and tell them the word of the Lord. Amen. He says, I can make them anew. Amen. And after he makes them anew, he can give them power to get them back up on their feet. Amen. To fight this good fight of faith as they march in the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Father, just as you told Ezekiel, Lord, we'll do the same, Lord. We will tell them about your son and what he has done at Calvary to take away their sins, Lord. And Father, we ask then that you pour out your grace, Lord. Make them a new creation, Lord. Save them, Lord. Speak to their hearts, Lord. Shake the foundation, Lord, underneath their feet. Whatever it takes, Lord. Whatever it takes, Lord, get them broken and contrite, Lord, and then save their soul or spirit, Lord, and make them a new creation in Christ, Lord. And then not only that, give them the power of the Holy Spirit to get them back up on their feet to fight this good fight of faith, Lord. And we believe we're going to go out in victory before you call us home. And Lord, we believe right now, Lord, by faith that these dead bones can live again. And we ask for your grace and mercy. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God.